Hello and welcome to this video on determining unknown angles of non-right angled triangles. Now in the previous video we saw how we could use the sine rule and the cosine rule to determine unknown lengths. And you remember we used the sine rule if we had two angle side pair, so side angle pair, side angle pair, and we used the cosine rule if we involved three sides and an angle. So you can see in this formula here the capital letters are the angles and this only involves one angle which is capital A but it involves all three sides and if that happened we use something called the cosine rule. Now if you haven't seen that video yet and you're not familiar with using the sine rule and the cosine rule to find unknown lengths then please stop this video now and watch that first. Now let's dive straight in with some example problems. We've got this triangle here which I'm going to quickly copy so I can draw on it. We've got 110, we've got an unknown angle this time, which is theta, remember theta is just a Greek letter, and it could just be like x, it's just any variable name basically, but often used for angles. We've got five and 11. Now, what are we gonna use? We're gonna use the sine rule or the cosine rule. Well, we don't have all three sides involved, so we can't use the cosine rule, but we do have, look, side angle pair, side angle pair. So that means we're gonna use this sine rule here. Now, if we've got an unknown angle, what we typically do is we reciprocate both sides of the equation. We flip it so that the unknown is at the top. So we can write sine A over A by just flipping this fraction is equal to sine B over B. You can still solve it if you don't do that and use the original formula, but it makes it easier because our unknown thing, the angle here, if we put the unknown angle here as the A, then it's at the top of the fraction and it just makes it easier to solve. So, if we just label this angle as capital A, then this opposite side would be little a. We've got capital B here, and then that would be little b as the opposite side. So let's just substitute that into the formula. We do sine of theta over the length of the opposite side, which is five, is equal to sine of the other angle, sine of 110, over the length of the opposite side, which is 11. Now, we want to get theta on its own. Now, sine of theta has been divided by 5, so let's get rid of that divide by 5 first by timesing both sides by 5. So I'm going to just get sine of theta, because timesing by 5 gets rid of the over 5, and I'm timesing this by 5. And do you remember, I could just write this times 5, but when you times by a non-fraction, it can just go at the top. So we could just write this as 5 sine 110 degrees over 11. That's 5 times bigger than this fraction here. Now, we could put that into our calculator, so sine of theta is equal to, well, 5 sine 110 divided by 11, and that is 0.4271. Don't do any rounding at this point. Now, we want to find a theta. Now, do you remember that to get rid of the sine in front of the theta, we just do inverse sine of both sides? And that's kind of like the inverse function, the opposite of sine, which gets rid of the sine. So we're just left with theta there, it gets rid of the sine, and we do inverse sine of 0.4271 and that will give us shift sign of the answer 25.3 degrees to three significant figures. Let's just check that looks sensible. Yes, that could be an angle of 25.3, so it's probably right. Now why don't you have a go at this second one? We've got a very similar triangle here. I would like you to find this angle A here. So you may want to pause the video and have a quick go at that. Right, let's do it. Now we've got side opposite angle, side opposite angle, so it's sine rule. So we're going to do sine of an angle, 20 degrees say, over the opposite length, 6, is equal to sine of the other angle, sine of A, over the opposite length, 8. Now we want to get A on its own, so we times by 8 to get rid of this divide by 8. So we're going to have 8 sine 20 degrees over 6 is equal to sine A. And we want to get rid of that sine in front of the A. So we do inverse sine of both sides. We could just do this all in one go. Equals A, because the inverse sine gets rid of the sine. Let's just put that whole thing on our calculator. And then that gives us A is equal to 27.1 degrees to three significant figures. And again, that, that looks reasonably sensible, doesn't it? Right, this next one is a bit complicated. There's a slight subtlety to it. Can you see, just looking at this triangle, that B is clearly an obtuse angle? It's more than 90 degrees. And I'm actually going to say B is obtuse, just so it's explicit, because sometimes these diagrams are not drawn accurately. So we want to find B. So if we do the usual thing, 
we could do sine of b over the length of the opposite side 12 is equal to sine of 32 over the opposite length, which is 7. So we could times by 12, so it becomes 12 sine 32 over 7. So we've got sine of b now. We want to undo that sine, so we just do inverse sine of all of that, and that will give us b. Now, if I do that on the calculator, we get 65 point three degrees. However, we can see that's obtuse. Now, if you think about the sine graph, this is what the sine graph looks like, which we've explored in other videos. This is y equals sine of x. And this is 180 degrees here. That was 360 degrees. That's x. That's y. And this is 1. Can you see that sine of 65.3 would be somewhere about here? So that would be 65.3 degrees there. But there's sine of another value which would give you the same y value. So can you see, if we did sine this value close to 180, that would give you the same y value. When we do sine of it, we get the same value. Now, by symmetry, we've gone 65 up from 0. So if we went 65 down from 180, we'd also have a solution. So all we need to do is 180 minus 65.3, and that is equal to... 114.7 degrees. So that's the actual value of b. So I'm going to cross out the b equals because that wasn't actually b. b was 180 minus that. And that's known as the ambiguous case. Now I've never actually seen it in a GCC exam except for a specimen paper. But basically if you have an obtuse angle and you're using the sine rule to get the unknown angle then you just basically subtract your value from 180 to fix it at the end. And you might think, well, what was that 65.3 degrees? Where did that come from? And the reason is, is because there could have been a second triangle that looks like this. Imagine I actually had this triangle instead. I could have had a length of 7 there to mimic that 7. I've still got that 12 there. I've still got that 32 degrees here. And we actually found this angle here on this triangle. Look, 12 over sine of that angle is equal to 7 over sine of that angle. Found, and that 5.3 was basically the solution to this triangle. Now you can see that that angle is the same as that angle there because this is isosceles. And therefore that angle B is just 180 minus that angle, which is exactly what we did. But we managed to work that out by thinking about the graph of sine. Now in question four, we've got this unknown angle here. This time we have all three sides available. And do you remember the cosine rule involves all three lengths and just one angle, which is exactly what we've got here. So let's just appropriately label the sides of this. We know that the unknown angle is A, therefore that side length for their opposite is A. Um, we can put B and C either way around. So let's just make that B and that C. Now let's substitute everything we have into this formula here. So we've got A squared, which is seven squared, is equal to b squared plus c squared, so 8 squared plus 5 squared, minus 2bc, minus 2 times b times c, 8 times 5, times the cos of the unknown angle, which in this case is theta. We don't know that angle. Now, what I tend to do here is I like to simplify the bits of this equation. So 7 squared is 49. Now, a mistake that a lot of students make is that they sort of think of this whole thing as one thing, and they work out 8 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 8 times 5, work out what that number is, and write that number cos of theta. But that's a misunderstanding how Bidmus works. In Bidmus, we always do the multiplications first, so there's a kind of implicit bracket around this. So we've got to work out 8 squared plus 5 squared, if I just do that, that is 89, and then we're subtracting, well, what's 2 times 5 times 8? That is 80, so it's 80 cos theta. So this does not mean 89 minus 80, lots of cos theta. It means 89 subtracting 80 cos theta. So that thing is one thing. It's not that that thing is one thing. Do you remember I have something called the Swapsy trick? So the Swapsy trick is this. If I had, say, 8 minus 5 equals 3, what could I swap in there so it's still true? Well, I could swap the thing I'm subtracting and the result. So I could say 8 minus 3 equals 5, and that's clearly still true. So that means I can swap the thing I'm subtracting here and that result of 49. So I've got 80 cos theta is equal to 89 minus 49. Ah, and 89 minus 49 just simplifies to 40. So we can use the swapsy trick whenever the variable is in a term that's being subtracted from something. We saw that in changing the subject. So now I want to get 
feature on its own, we're doing cos of it and then we're timesing by 80. We want to undo the times by 80, so we divide both sides by 80. 40 divided by 80 is equal to just half. And then to get rid of that cos, we just do inverse cos of both sides, so inverse cos of half, or you might know your exact trig values, you would therefore know that this angle is 60 degrees. And that was just a coincidence, I picked random sides and we just happened to get a nice angle here. So why didn't you now have a go at this one here, and you may want to pause the video, in order to have a go at this. We're trying to find this angle A and we've got these side lengths of 6, 5 and 4. Right, let's do it. So, let's label that angle capital A because that's what we've got in this formula here. So therefore that side length A, that side length B and C, doesn't matter which way the B and C go. So let's put in our formula. We've got A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus two times B times C times cos of A. And then we just simplify each of the bits of it. So this bit, this bit and this bit we simplify. 36 is equal to, well, 16 plus 25 is 41, minus 2 times 4 times 5 is 40. So we then apply the swapsy trick. We can swap this thing and the result. So we get 40 cos A is equal to 41 minus, minus 36, which is equal to 5. So we can then divide both sides by 40. So cos of A is 5 over 40, which is equal to an eighth. And then we just do inverse cos of both sides, so shift cos of answer. And that gives you 82.8 degrees to three significant figures. Well done if you got that right. Now the very final question is this here. So if I draw out this triangle, we've got 100 here. We've got 15 here, 12 here, and x is here. Now we might initially think we can use the cosine rule because, well, we've got all three sides involved in the angle. Now if I attempt to do that, I've got a squared, which is the 15 squared, is equal to, let's say that's b and that's c, we would end up with x squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times x times 12 times cos 100. Now the problem with this is that it's a bit complicated because we have an x squared term and we have an x term. So we end up with a quadratic equation. Now we could actually use the quadratic formula on this, but it's just a bit unnecessarily complicated. So in fact, we're not going to use the cosine rule. We're actually going to use the sine rule, but twice. So if you have ever have a scenario where you know all three lengths, but the unknown side is not opposite the angle, then I wouldn't use the cosine rule. I would use the sine rule. So how could we use the sine rule where we've got a side and an angle pair. Now, we don't have a side angle pair. We don't know that x and we don't know that angle. But we got that side there. We could work out what this angle is. So let me just call that angle A. So we've got side angle pair, side angle pair. So we do the usual thing. We say sine of the angle divided by the opposite side is sine of that angle divided by the opposite side. And then we do the usual thing, we times by 12. So we get 12 sine 100 over 15. So that is sine of A, because we've times by the 12. And to get rid of that sine, we just do inverse sine of that to get A. So if we do that on our calculator, we get an angle of 51.985 degrees. Now I'm picking quite a number of decimal places because we don't get any rounding errors. So we know this, this here is 51.985 degrees, but because we have two of these angles, we could then find the remaining angle in the triangle, because these three are up to 180. So I'm going to just do 180 minus 100 minus answer key to use a previous answer. And that means if we do that, we've got 180 minus 100 minus the 51.985. That gives you 28.015. Degrees. So we now know that that angle is 28.015 and now we do have side angle pair, side angle pair. So we can just use the sine rule again. So we can do x over sine of 28.015 is equal to, now we could either use this pair 
or this pair, but it's easier to use this pair because we've got whole numbers here. So it's 15 over sine of 100, making sure that the side lengths are the top this time because we've got an unknown side and sine of the angles at the bottom. Now I can just times both sides by sine of that. So we've got 15 sine 28.015 over sine of 100, and let's just do that, is equal to 7.15 two free significant figures.